Welcome to the Healthcare Business Secrets Show, where we interview industry experts who are dominating their market and really figure out what they're doing to make them have so much success so that you can learn and implement those strategies yourself to double your revenue, double your impact, and double your time off. In this episode, we're speaking with Craig Lindell. Craig is a physical therapist and strength and conditioning specialist that founded the Prehab Guys, an online platform that teaches people how to take control of their own health uh, through physical therapy. He started his career as an entrepreneur right after earning his degree as a doctor in physical therapy from USC uh, by partnering with two of his friends to build the Prehab Guys. Craig has a social media following of over 690, uh, sorry, yeah, 679,000 followers. Uh, and through their Prehab Guys platform, they've provided physical treatment to thousands of people around the globe online, uh, as well as helping them to prevent injuries. Welcome to the show, Craig. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. So to start off, I want to kind of jump straight into why I got you on the show. And I've gone through some of the things that you're doing, and I've really had a, a deep look, and, and you're absolutely killing it uh, in the online space. Um, you have a massive social media following. Uh, you're leveraging it very well. Uh, for your hugely successful online platform uh, where you're working with clients all over the world remotely. And I think that's the dream for a lot of uh, my listeners, especially during pandemic times, right? We've been under the, under the pump with referrals drying up because practices are closing. Clients just don't need help, but we can't see them in the same ways and our businesses are being affected. And a lot of us are in, uh, you know, we're, we're doing the old ways of doing things. And everyone always says that, you know, we're doing the old ways and we need to do the new ways. But I think it's become super apparent uh, now how at risk most of us were in our healthcare businesses with something like COVID happening and our inability to actually see clients. But even if we are seeing clients to not get the same word of mouth and referrals, et cetera, because we don't have any other channels that are really bringing people in. So um, what kind of got you thinking, Hey, I want to build a massive online business instead of doing the new grad thing of working in someone else's practice or hustling in your own practice. Yeah, I think it just all comes back to why we started this thing in the first place. And we'd be lying to you if we if we said that what we started four years ago was going to blossom into what it is today. Yeah. Uh, it just sort of evolved through a lot of hard work and dedication and just understanding where things were going. Uh, yeah. But from the get-go, we wanted to educate the masses. We felt like there was a giant misconception about what physical therapy was, about what rehab was. And more importantly, there's, there's a missing connection with what it could be. And we understand the value of prevention and what that can do for people, what it can do for the masses, what it can do for the health industry um, as total. So it all goes back to educating the masses. And that's why we started an Instagram account four years ago. Yeah. Uh, but throughout school, it evolved into, okay, we've created this following. We now have a platform. So let's yeah. start sharing our opinion with what we think should be what physical therapy is. Let's change the definition. Let's change the narrative. Yeah. And then we graduated. We realized like, hey, we can, we can actually roll with this. Let's, let's go for it. We, we took jobs at your traditional physical therapy clinics because that's what we had to do at the time. However, we continue to work on this platform and, and then the shift went from working more for other people to working for ourselves. The shift went from working in the business to working on the business yeah. by yeah. getting more help, increasing our bandwidth. And it was just understanding that this is a really viable option to help people online. This is where a lot of people are going. They're now turning to Dr. Google. They're turning to the internet to get information immediately because immediate gratification is desired now with so many things, more than yeah. just healthcare. And the global pandemic just poured gasoline on fire in terms of uh, our yeah, business. Bet. We were, yeah. you know, we were built to be online and we had, we had everything in the right place. And then it was just a matter of, okay, we, we need to continue increasing bandwidth. And our company has grown a lot over the past five months. And again, it's just expanding bandwidth. It's getting more help and 
moving forward, understanding where we're going. It's, it's no longer the prehab guys. It's now prehab. We have a team of 14, 15 people that help wow. us so yeah. continue working on the business because I think that's where a lot of people hit plateaus because they feel like they have to have their hands in everything from day to day operations. And yeah, I'm sure yeah. you understand this, you know, this is, 100%. this is nothing new to you and I'm sure you're coaching this to everyone, but it's how do we continue to grow the business? How do we continue to push the needle? And it's taking a step back It's doing more of a management role and figuring out how do we continue to push prehab to, to even greater masses uh, because what we've, the amount of followers that we have and the impact that we have, it still feels, it still feels very small. We want prehab to be a household name. Like when you see the Nike switch or like you see the Apple sign, we want prehab to just be one of those companies. Yeah. I love that. And and I think that, I think that a lot of the time it comes from insecurity with letting go of stuff. Like I'm going to be the best at it. And that might be objectively true, but then you are your own worst enemy and you're restricting your growth and this needing to be the best at the thing or to do it the most efficiently or most effectively or whatever is, is what holds a lot of people back. And, and you're right. I do, I do coach this. I do teach this because it, it's so true. Like we just get in our own way. If I was the best at answering the phone, right. And I had to then answer the phone and I wasn't going to give it up. How busy can I really be? Cause I now have to answer the phone and take payments. If I'm, if I'm the best at cleaning the toilet in the clinic, then like, it's just, it doesn't make any sense when you look at where your zone of genius is and what actually matters to the business. Now there's, there's two parts to it, right? Like you can have a practice where you are practicing in it and you enjoy it and that's fine, but you have to accept where you can get to with that or you have to create leverage for yourself that allows you to work in it while it's also growing, if you still want that stuff. So for me, for the last few months, I've still been in practice like two hours a week or something because I enjoy it. And I had some staff I wanted to train and I like coaching them. Um, but it was never, I'm growing the business and I'm going to do everything because I would never achieve the other stuff. So there is a give and take with that. And I think this, the sooner we can get out and outsource and get others to do stuff for us, the more we can then focus on our zone of genius. And I've experienced that myself in the rapid growth uh, of this company um, of practice mastery uh, and, and healthcare business secrets and things like that. It's like, I need to be doing the things that only I can do that add the most value that then creates uh, yeah, it's the rocket fuel on the fire, but it's the machine that builds it. And the sooner you realize that there needs to be a machine and you're just fueling the machine rather than getting out there and cranking the handle yourself, uh, the more that you can actually scale and expand and can impact people and you've got a lot of energy you got a lot of passion i love it because that's what it takes to be successful and i, I was just um on a previous episode i was talking to somebody about this and, and this is not my my statement so don't quote me but it was like successful people and and unsuccessful people and it doesn't matter whether you're you're it's happy and sad or financial finances and uh relationships whatever people who are successful and are willing to tolerate things that unsuccessful people are not and they're not willing to tolerate things that unsuccessful people are the latest episode on netflix you really want to watch it being able to tolerate the discomfort of missing out on the episode to go after the thing you want is why people are going to have success and i think that being driven internally by like you said you wanting to this to be a household name that means that you're emotionally invested in the outcome of the business it's not just there to produce some cash yeah. means that you hustle you put in the work you figure out the strategies to to solve the problems that would prevent you from being a household name. Cause that's a big mission and you've got to have processes. Um, so with your growth and I know you said this with, with COVID and everything. And I think that a lot of us online have noticed this big boom. Uh, I know I have, cause people have realized, Hey, look, the, the old way is not working and my business is dying. I do do something different. And so now they're actually looking and listening and taking things serious. Um, but especially in healthcare, there's this massive opportunity. And I think the pre preparedness that you had allowed you to capitalize on the opportunity that was present. Whereas most people don't, they thought to themselves, Hey, I should be making videos. I should be on this and doing this and making blogs or whatever, but you know, it doesn't get many clients right now. And then here you are doing it 
four years later, over a half a million followers, big platform explosion. So when you were doing this, your intention was to influence the landscape, so to speak. Has your growth been linear or has it been kind of hockey stick? I would say it's been constantly linear ever since we started. And then when things hit in March, I think it just it put a spotlight on what we offered. Mm -hmm. So then we, we saw a spike. But then more importantly, it was we realized that we were limited in what we could do with it just being the three of us and a small team. So we had to expand. Mm -hmm. And you hit on so many good points. I, I was trying to to soak it all in so that I could tie it back to you. But really, it would just be an echo chamber with what I would have to say. I mean, there's so many points that you brought up that I feel the three of us are constantly talking about during our business meetings, mm -hmm. what it takes to scale and what it takes to, to let go and not be too attached to certain things. And, but yeah, going back to your question, it's everything's been constantly linear. I think yeah. we've done a really good job now, and especially over the past few years of recognizing when, when we've hit plateaus or what's it going to take to push the needle forward. And that's yeah. where you, you have to let go of your ego. You, you can't be a too, you can't be too attached to certain things like I mentioned. And it's being the best at what you do to take it a step further. It's being able to teach other people how to be great. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if, if you want to expand and you want to take on bigger roles, then you need to bring on people and you have to give them autonomy to be great at the same task. And mm. that's designing systems. That's giving people, like I said, autonomy and confidence, teaching them how to do things, teaching them how to troubleshoot on their own, because you can't have your hand in every single bowl or else yeah. you're never going to be able to, like you said, work on the things that only you can do. To, to be a business owner, I think the three of us have learned, if there is anything that we are doing that someone else can do, then we're not working on the business. We're working in the business. Yeah. Three of us need to spend time only on things that the three of us are only capable of doing. And, and it's, it's having to let things go you know, and which is, which can be very challenging for people, but you brought it up best. It's, there's a difference between knowing and doing. I think there's a lot of clinicians and a lot of business owners that know what they should be doing, but their actions don't reflect their thoughts. Yeah. And if you're that, that disconnect is ultimately is going to limit people from reaching their goals. But again, as long as you are, as long as you're doing what you enjoy doing and it's okay. And there's not a disconnect between where you are and where you want to be. That's fine. Yeah. Like quality of life can be extremely high, but if, if you want to take things further and your actions don't reflect that, then, then there's a disconnect that you have to address. So, so many good points. Gary V, uh, someone I follow, uh, and you, you probably know who I'm talking about. Um, he, he talks about this. It's like, if you, if you really want something, then stop complaining and start doing stuff and work harder. Yep. If you don't want it, then just shut up and be happy. Like you don't have to build the million dollar practice, but no. if you really want to, then you got to start doing stuff. And there's a lot of trapped experts. There's a lot of broke experts, people with the alphabet after their name. Uh, and, and for those people who, who listen to me regularly, you'll hear me say this all the time. It's like you got the alphabet after your name, but you're broke and no one knows who you are and you're not really helping anyone. You're helping Mrs. Jones, the one person in front of you, which can be meaningful. Don't get me wrong. But if, if you want to help the masses and you want to grow bigger and you want to do more, then you can't, you've got to get out from under yourself and stop being like, stop trying to be the expert and focus on how do I create leverage and get the message out? Because people like Tony Robbins, people like Oprah, Dr. Oz, whatever, these are not necessarily the top guys but they've been able to like expertise wise but they've been able to help the most number of people because they're developing leverage they're developing systems they're, they're getting out of their own way and thinking more about the impact they're having than on them doing it perfectly every time 
but there's this perfection culture, especially in healthcare. And I think it comes from, uh, you know, how many years we train for and, and the professors and what they tell us. Uh, and, and at some point it's kind of like, it sounds super harsh, but I, I have a naturopath in my practice and they were basically, she, she said that they were basically told that if you think that you are going to come out of college and be successful and make a whole lot of money as a naturopath, you're kidding yourself because and especially in New Zealand, most of them just work in uh, health shops. And I listened, I looked at it. I said, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Why don't you just do this, this, and this, but she had such this, this block in her own head about what, was possible because of what she'd been conditioned to believe from what she was being told by the people that she looked up to and thought that that's how it was. But it's coming from people who have not necessarily been in it. They're not doing the things that we're doing. They're not seeing it differently. They're, they're seeing what they see and that influences what they say. And then we all hear it. And as health professionals, we're very, you know, we're in this box of like, you got to do it like this. And then there's a few of us that step outside that, but we do it because we're okay with the consequence, which is publicity, the consequence, which is naturally negativity. You'll have this people who just spew absolute trash on your content and ads, probably people who just say things that's not the right way to do it, or this is not perfect. We spend all this time trying to research and make everything incredibly hundred percent applicable in all situations. Amazing. And I just don't, I just don't like it. I just think it's, it's just so fake. Like we're here to help people. Let's get messages out there. Let's connect with people. Let's not try and be perfect and just try and facilitate that and understand that I don't have to be this expert. I just have to be, I just have to know a bit more than the person in front of me and facilitate them and be constantly learning myself. Um, that's my, that's my, my rant done. Um, when you're, when you're, when you're running your platform, are you running a platform that is monthly based or do they pay up front? Uh, how does it typically work uh, in your business model? We have a couple of different services. Right now we have a exercise library subscription, the prehab exercise library that is on our website. You can sign up for monthly, you can sign up for annually, but this is a platform to create home exercise programs, to create workouts and to share with your patients and clients. Uh, that has been received very warmly. We started that just a little over two years now and we've made some massive updates to it. It was, we designed it based on a problem, right? We were students once upon a time and we would treat patients and then we would wanna give them the most comprehensive home exercise program. But next thing you know, we found ourselves videotaping movements on their phone and then uploading that to the computer, sending that in an email, coupled with some yeah. YouTube links, coupled with some Instagram links. It's like, this is a mess. So yeah. we designed what we thought was the ideal home exercise builder, and that's our prehab exercise library. Yeah, and that's like I said, your name or annual and remote programming, and that's that's been very helpful for a lot of clinicians and practitioners during this global pandemic. Yeah, we yeah. also have prehab programs which are on our prehab app, and that's a one-stop shop. Purchase once. And that's like a first line of defense to, okay, you're dealing with a certain problem or you feel like you have a problematic body region. Hey, sign up for this program, give it a shot, see if it, it can help you out. People use it as a proactive preventive measure. People also use them reactively. Uh, we do offer some performance programming on there as well, uh, yeah. but that's really designed for the average consumer versus our exercise library is geared towards clinicians, practitioners, personal trainers, strength coaches, you name it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, when I'm dealing with a client who's, who's repeating the same thing over and over again, uh, I always say to them, why don't you have a look at the advice you're giving and pre-record some stuff and make a membership area and then give your clients access to it. And you've just done that and you've just taken it completely to the next level, uh, which is amazing. And what that allows you to do is to have leverage because the next level, and you might be heading towards this is uh, bigger programs, more consulting based um, specific training uh, plans for athletes, higher ticket things that build off the back of this. Um, a lot of people want to build these membership sites, but they don't understand that the, there needs to be a volume associated with it. If you've got a low ticket product that's even recurring, 
there's got to be a lot of that goes into it. And that social media following that public awareness is key. And you've paired the two of them together really, really well. What would your advice be for someone who was thinking about taking their knowledge and turning it into some kind of uh, uh, product or course as a health professional? I think you said it best, and we've spoke about it uh, a few times during this talk is leverage, right? I think the beauty of technology is that you have the opportunity to put the work into something and it can live forever versus in, in person stuff. There's a threshold. You can only see so many people in one day. You can only see so many people at one time. You can only do your manual skills so many times in a day or, or like you said, educate and show exercises. So whatever your craft is, you know, put a lot of work into it, make it comprehensive, design it, but then create it so that it can last forever. And then yeah. you can package it all together and then share it with people where it's a one-stop shop product. The, all the troubleshooting is there. All of the education is there. All of the instruction is there. And then I think for people coming into the space now, to be a generalist is, is harder versus niching down. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people, it's identifying what your passion project is, what is your true passion topic, and, and diving into that hole because there's always going to be a market for specificity. There's always a market for a generalist too, but understand that if you're just getting your feet wet with this niching down is probably easier than going the general route. And then yeah. creating systems, uh, not waiting for everything to be perfect. If you wait for everything to be perfect, someone's going to beat you to it. I think we, we learned that the hard way, not meaning that people beat us to something, but more so we tried making every single little thing perfect. But in reality, look at the first iPhone compared to now, right? Look yeah, at 100%. Look at look at SpaceX where they they try to launch, didn't go great, but they did it again and it works. Like don't be afraid to fail because failures feedback. And I think it goes to what you spoke about earlier, where man, clinicians, they love to to banter at one another. Instead of trying to help the masses, everyone wants to butt heads and say, no, you're wrong and I'm right. Or why would you do that? Versus focusing on what is the real goal? And we should be focused on helping people. Have you had so, that? Have you had that oh, negativity I mean, from I mean, other professionals, other PTs? Oh, of course. There's all, everyone has an opinion nowadays, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's so much easier to sit in the stands and give your opinion versus stepping onto the field and expressing what you think is right. It's and so you, easy to comment or send an email yeah. and, and, and then, you know, not have to respond. We used to take that stuff to heart, especially as students. Oh, um, yeah. Now we have a team and there's, there's so many comments and emails that roll in. It's hard to put your eyes on everything, but uh, I've, you know, if someone has something really negative to say, now my personal favorite is just to delete it because they put so much time and effort into that comment and it's just like and they delete it <laughs> and for their opinion to disappear and more importantly to not even waste time and energy or responding to them that's that's the ultimate win in my opinion yeah. there's certain things to attach yourself to and there's certain things to detach yourself to and and one of them is opinions because yeah. you're not going to make everyone happy but you know it, i think everything comes back to it, Whoever's listening to this podcast, they're the type of person that I would imagine they have a hard time putting their work down. There's not many people that are listening to this podcast that are, that are trying to find energy and motivation to continue working. They're just yeah. trying to, to maximize how they're doing their work because they have a hard time putting their work down. And, and you know, don't, don't even get caught up in people's opinions of your craft and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Because that's just a waste of your time and you're not being efficient. No. Um, I think that something that, that people get caught up in is worrying about the opinions of others and how they're being perceived on the thing they're doing rather than the value that it's creating. So we get so insecure 
that I need my peers to approve what I'm doing and I need everyone to like it, that I could get, I could change a hundred people's lives, like absolutely change their lives. But one person, two people, three people say they didn't like my face or the exercise was slightly wrong or anything like that. And suddenly everything is just like, Oh, I'm terrible. I'm bad. Like, and it's, and this is why people just don't do stuff. And this comes back to what I said about success. Successful people are willing to tolerate that pain and they're not willing to tolerate the pain of not having the thing they want. Whereas the average person and typically, especially the unsuccessful person. And sometimes it's hard to hear when we realize like, Oh shit, like that's me is I'm not willing to tolerate that pain of going and doing something and having people aware of it. And then they chop me down. It's, it's very easy to chop people down. Uh, I think Tony Robbins says this, right? You can build a taller tower or you can just break everyone else's down and then yours is is taller. And most people just do that. Yeah. uh, You know, like I said, everyone's, it's very easy to sit on the sidelines and, and banter and, and give your opinion, but you know, don't get caught up in that stuff. Uh, I just lost my train of thought. I, I was going to mention something. Uh, I forget what we were just no mentioning. Something really good. I, I forget. Um, I am. Um, I I get people to say like with the negative comments, for example. There's an opportunity to educate the next person who's reading that comment. Um, there's an opportunity to establish authority and what you believe in, um, while not inciting the trolls further but for the next person who's watching. And then there's times you just hit delete and just move on with your life. I love negative comments. They give me energy. I, it cracks me up. Some of the stuff that I read from people, I'm like, what you don't even know me and you're writing this thing. Um, and, and you have to remember that uh, Gary V says this, like you don't, you can't, you can't judge and you can't worry about someone's judgment when they don't know what's going on in your head with the decision that you made. They're not in here, you know, they're just seeing it from the outside. Yeah. And that's, that's what I wanted to touch on is, don't get so caught up in everyone else's opinion because just reflect back on what you're doing, why you're doing it and who your target audience is, you know, like if your target audience is to help the average person, you shouldn't get so caught up in what everyone else is thinking and saying, if it's not going to, to influence what your target audience thinks. Like, of course, I think people get concerned and they get caught up when, uh, people are doing things that aren't always supported by evidence or this and that. But at the end of the day, we, we don't have everything figured out. We don't know. And, no. and what, what people are putting out there when they create content or they're, they're working with someone is it's based off their previous experiences. It's based off of their education. It's based off their perceptions to, to judge every single person and not hear their side of the story I mean, it's, it's just not fair sometimes. So I think just remember who you're trying to help and focus on your target audience. And yeah, you can, you can use the negative comments as fuel or you can just delete it and out of sight, out of mind, whatever works for you to continue pushing the needle forward is, is what you need to do. Last thing I'll add to this is that um, if you are not, you, if you're not pissing some people off, you're not exciting others and you can't be gray and in the middle. You have to be competitive. You have to be in a position where you're establishing and drawing a line and saying, this is what I believe and this is what I'm saying, what I'm going to do. And by doing that, you excite people to take action. If you're super vanilla, no one's going to listen to you anyway. So haters are a sign of success. It means you've made it um, because people are willing to take time out of their lives to spread negativity, which means people are taking time out of their lives to experience positivity from what you're doing as well. Um, more specifically, uh, specifically to tactical stuff, what are you doing or have done? Do you think that's got you so much success with growing your social following, especially Instagram? With Instagram, when we got together and we came up with the idea, we, at the time we didn't even know, but we were, we created brand standards and it was, you have to post every single day, at least one post a day. And that consistency has gotten us to where we are today. We, we have not missed posting on social media once in the past four years, because that was, amazing, yeah. uh, that was an agreement that we made. And there were other things where it's, you know, 
it's education. No, no matter what we are posting, no matter what we are doing, it has to be based in education. Mm. And there's pillars to content that people digest on the internet. And some of it is entertainment. Another pillar is education. There's another pillar out there. I think it's a 30, but I couldn't even tell you right now. But sticking, sticking to our brand standards mm. and more importantly, sticking to what we believed in, I think has helped us grow. More importantly, we, people trust us. And that's because we're, you know, we're, we're not just trying to sell someone on something because we know that it's going to make us money. It's like, no, we, what, the message that we're trying to put out and our mission is to educate people and to help the masses because yeah. the current healthcare system is not what we want it to be. There's so many experiences out there that we get emailed about, that we get messaged about, and it's like, that sucks. We're, we're sorry to hear that, and we're sorry that that's what you experienced. Yeah. We're trying to change the narrative. And, uh, you know, when you're, when you're within your bubble, like when we were in PT school, everyone, it, it was an echo chamber. Everyone knows the value of PT. Everyone knows the value of prevention. But then the minute that you step out, and you even talk to your friends and family, they're like, oh, you, you do massage or you only help people after <laughs> surgery. It's just like, oh my God, no. So yeah. we, we had to change the definition and the perception of what we did and what we practiced. And there's still people to this day that don't know the true value of, of physical therapy, of, of chiropractic care and, and other types of care for musculoskeletal issues. So that is, that's always going to be true to what we are focused on. And I think people can, people can respect that. And then it's just a matter of we're adapting to the times, you know, with yeah. a global pandemic, people have shifted to more online stuff. People have shifted to virtual stuff. There's been the conception of TikTok and, and what Instagram used to be to where it is now is completely different. So we are constantly adapting to the times. We're changing how we, how we write our content, how we deliver our content. You know, it's, I think the, the definition of innovation is you, you create something for a need that someone doesn't even know that they, they need it. And yeah. our goal is to, we're trying to constantly innovate how can we deliver the best experience of taking care of your own health and taking yeah. control of your own body? And that's, a, that's our mission, you know, and that's why I have a hard time putting work down. That's why I have a hard time not responding to messages and emails or right now auditing our content because I want to make sure that we are, we are at the cutting edge of innovating the experience of taking control of your own health. Yeah. And it's why you're successful. Be literally because of that, you know, and I think people think they just should be doing some content. And when you should do something, you never do it. I should go to the gym. You're not going to go to the gym. I must yeah. go to the gym. I yeah. need to, and I'm going to, and that's why you've been so consistent, which is why you've experienced the growth because you're, you're doing it. And then when you're seeing something not working or a better way of doing it, you innovate and, and you said it right. Like no one, you have to you have to innovate ahead of the curve. No one needs an iPad, but they yeah. sell millions of them or whatever because they created the need by showing us the value and then saying, "Hey, look, you need this thing." And they didn't do it by saying, "Here's the features and all this commoditized stuff." They had, you know, or well, let's let's say for an iPhone, they have young, attractive people having fun taking photos, and so you buy it because you think it's better. But there's another brand that has technically better features, but you don't buy that one because it's not eliciting emotion uh, and desire and need for it. It's just solving, just solving a problem, which is why, like you said, people think PT, car or whatever, I just, therefore I'm injured. And so now I, I should get some treatment. And that philosophy comes from problem solving, not from innovation and drawing people towards uh, a new lane. And if you can do that properly, then you're really setting yourself up for success. Apple's successful because they've done that. Other companies are not. There's no blockbuster because they didn't pivot. Netflix yeah. destroyed them. They thought, ah, oh, it's fine. But was it, Bar was it Barnes & Noble or uh, one of them? 
got destroyed by um, Amazon. And there's a funny video of them saying that, oh, this is ridiculous on Amazon. You can't sell books or online. No one wants it. The internet's a fad. And now you've got Bezos, richest man in the world, at Amazon, absolute giant. And this company just doesn't exist because they didn't pivot. Uh, no because they weren't in it and you're in it watching it, seeing what's happening and adapting to it, which is amazing. And I think that more people just need to get into it for the right reasons. You're not, like you said, you're not just selling crap. You're not just doing it because you're, you're in it to change people's lives and impact them, get your message out. And that fuels you to do it. Even if there is no response because you know, it's good. And most people are doing marketing and uh, sales and social media because they feel they have to. And they're not doing it for the real reason, which is how can I get this message out and impact people and change things and innovate, uh, which is what you need to do if you want to have success in it. And it shows with the practices that are struggling right now and the practices that are thriving. Um, who's been a, a big influence on your, your collection of knowledge and, and moving forward? Is there, is there authors, are there influences? Who are you following at the moment to, to get a lot of this knowledge? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I think there were... There were people on social media before we started uh, that they had large audiences and they were they were able to influence. Um, I can't even I can't even think of some of the handles right now. Uh, but there were the, you know there were people in the healthcare spaces that were that were trying to do it in the past. Uh, I think from a content perspective and uh, a PT perspective, I have to give credit to my mentors when I was at physical therapy school at USC, like Dr. Beth Fisher, uh, Dr. Cornelia Kulig, those were two monumental mentors for me. And uh, Dr. Jared Vagey, he's also the, the climbing doctor. He was someone that, you know, he, he took a lot of risk and he went forward. He was doing online content about rock climbing when there was no such thing and writing about it. Um, so they were three monumental people that I, I have a ton of respect for, and they keep me in check when it comes to continuing with clinical care and making sure that we're doing things by best evidence. Um, in terms of people that are really influential now on me, and there's no one really specific. I would just say I've gotten into reading more books mm -hmm. and listening to more stuff. Uh, since you're a Kiwi, I have to shout out probably my favorite book of this year that I've read is Legacy by James Kerr. Like if you're looking for a quick read um, and, and to really flip the switch on what you're doing from a top-down approach and looking at how you can do things from an organizational standpoint and systems and how everything that you do as an individual in a unit how it can flourish. Uh, I think that's an amazing read. Um, and then other than that, uh, my wife and I, we've gotten into a kick of like uh, outdoor exercises, uh, yeah. <laughs> hiking, backpacking, trail running, endurance stuff. So I picked up some, some books focused on like the uphill athlete and mountaineering. Uh, I'm very influenced heavily right now in the idea of mountaineering. It's, it's doing something that I've never done and it's, it takes me completely out of my comfort zone, but to, to now try to summit mountains with snow and learning about things that I haven't done. That's what's driving me right now and influencing me. And I think that's, that, that's something that I would always recommend to business owners or clinicians that if you're comfortable with what you're doing and you don't feel uncomfortable if you don't feel like you're taking risk or if you feel like you're not doing something that, that you're concerned about, then you are not pushing the bar. You are not pushing the needle. Like you, you need to get uncomfortable with feeling uncomfortable and you need to pursue things that you're not used to doing. And that's how you know that you are, you're continuing to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's really good. Thanks. Um, last question. You got 60 seconds. What's one thing you would recommend healthcare business owners to do this week that would help them grow their businesses and why? Think of where you are. What is your business lacking right now? How could it adapt? And what are the actionables that are necessary in order to adapt? 
as a business owner, look at your team, identify everyone's strengths and take, uh, take their situ situational awareness um, to let you continue working on the business versus in the business. Give people autonomy to take the actions necessary for the business to adapt and let you continue focusing on uh, what you need to do. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much uh, for coming on the show. Where can our audience connect with you online? Uh, so you can find us at theprehabguys.com. You can find us on all social media platforms. Just search prehab. We should pop up. Hopefully, if we've done yep. our job right over the past four years, uh, you'll find a P in brackets, uh, red, black, and white color scheme. And you can, you can reach out to us at info at theprehabguys.com. Uh, if you're a clinician, you're a practitioner, definitely check out our exercise library. It's a way to build and deliver remote programming for your patients and clients. And uh, yeah, happy to connect. Thanks for having yeah. me. Really I'll make sure all of that's in the show notes for everyone to check out. Uh, thank you so much again. You take care. Thank you. You too. Thank you for listening to the show. If you like the episode, please hit subscribe and leave us a review. I'd really appreciate it as it helps us get our episodes out to more people just like you who want to know how to increase their revenue, impact more people, and build businesses that work for the lifestyle they want. Now, I know your time is valuable and I know that you are here to learn the secrets to success in your health business. So I have something special for you just for checking out the episode. Now, if you're a health professional, coach, or trainer in business, and you're serious about growing a profitable, impactful business, then pay attention because as a listener of the show, I want you to win. And so I've created a host of resources available exclusively for listeners of the show. So if you're tired of trying to figure out this game of business, marketing, and sales all on your own, and you're ready to just implement what's already proven to work rather than reinventing the wheel, I want you right now to go and check out healthcarebusinesssecrets.com forward slash insider. And there you'll find over $5,000 worth of trainings, resources, and coaching available only for listeners of the show. There I'll give you the resources on everything from how to acquire 10 times more of your ideal clients using social media and paid ads, even referrals, how to increase your client conversion into packages at an 80 to 90% conversion rate like me, how to retain your clients for longer, getting them better results and making them happier, how to increase your prices and charge a premium to work with you and how you can build a six, multi-six, even seven-figure practice just like I did, but with a tenth of the time and a tenth of the effort. What I want you to realize is that everything I teach comes from exactly what I did to have success and still have success in my own health business, and I want to share that with you so you can have success too. So go check out healthcarebusinesssecrets.com forward slash insider right now and let me help you win big in your health business. Also remember to subscribe for two episodes every week full of the secrets to have success in your health business as well as leave us a review so we know what you thought of the show. And I'll see you on the next episode.